If you're stuck at home right now, I bet the biggest question you're asking yourself is when will this end? Well, I've got some good news and some bad news. During the height of the epidemic here in China, I made some videos to show you what life was actually like here in Beijing. Sadly, the virus has begun devastating other parts of the world, but here in China, life is cautiously returning to normal. Well, kind of. In this video, I'm going to show you what the situation is like three months on here in Beijing and hopefully offer you some light at the end of your isolation tunnel. So one of the biggest talking points, particularly in Western countries through this epidemic, has been whether or not you should be wearing a mask. In Asian countries, there is no stigma about wearing a mask, and they're widely available. In my original video, I pointed out that it was pretty much compulsory for me to be wearing a mask outside. But are people still wearing masks right now? Let's go and take a look. As you can see, pretty much everyone on the street is still wearing a mask and it's compulsory if you get a taxi. I've seen a few older people around the hutongs not wearing them, but this is where they live, so I assume if they went further afield, they'd be wearing a mask too. To be honest, I think if I didn't wear a mask, people would be quite uncomfortable and very worried around me. There's a lot of anxiety towards foreigners at the moment and overseas Chinese students and then bringing the virus back to China with them. To be honest, I don't really mind because it makes me feel safer wearing a mask. Dear citizens, at the moment of fighting the new coronavirus, your cooperation and contribution are appreciated. I'm here in the beautiful Ritten Park, which would be lovely on any day, but today is particularly significant for me because it's the first time I've been to a park since they reopened here in Beijing. As I mentioned in my last film, all public places were shut here. And before the epidemic, spending time in the park was one of my favorite things to do. So I think it'll be a good indicator to see if we're getting back to normal. As you can see, there's lots of people out and about and everybody seems a lot more relaxed than has been for the past few months. But it's taken a long road to get here. I didn't exactly wake up one morning and everything was back to normal. This is a slow process. So if you're stuck at home right now, keep hope. Hopefully in the next few months, this will be you as well. sites have begun opening up, as well as businesses, and in many provinces, schools have a start date again. I'm hoping the next stage is going to be things like gyms and cinemas opening up, and eventually we'll be able to travel freely around China. Right now in Beijing, there's a 14-day quarantine period, so if I leave and come back, I have to quarantine for 14 days, so travel right now really isn't an option yet. Notify, report, isolate. Do keep in mind, some things will never be the same again. When I walk around my neighborhood, there are lots of businesses that couldn't weather the storm and haven't reopened. This could be a sign of things to come in the next year. As you can tell from the amount of people who are out and about that this is the weekend, but a lot of people have been asking me about my working week. Well, I've been going into the office one or two times a week and the rest of the time I've been working from home. 
As anybody who's worked in an office before will know, if one person gets sick, then everyone gets sick. So my company, quite rightly, has been very cautious about this. As many people are still working from home, rush hour is nowhere near as busy as it was before the epidemic. But, as you can see, the roads are gradually getting busier. If you watched my film from a few months ago, then you'll remember just how deserted the subway station was. We were practically the only people on there, apart from the guys wearing hazmat suits that were taking your temperature before you got on. To be honest, I haven't really needed to take the subway since then, so I haven't been on, so I'm intrigued to see if it's any busier now. That was far from the busiest that I've seen the subway, but at least it's no longer eerily quiet like much of Beijing was during the lockdown. In my original video, the place that shocked viewers the most was the area of Sanlutun, the busiest shopping and nightlife district in one of the busiest cities, in one of the busiest countries in the world, was deserted. Well, not anymore. Even though it's pretty busy everywhere, some shops are still taking precautions and only allowing a certain number of people in the shop at one time, which is a pretty good thing. So the dining experience in Beijing isn't exactly what it used to be. There are lots of different rules and they are constantly changing. We've been to restaurants where we can't even sit on the same table. We've been to restaurants which only allow a 50% capacity. And we've been to restaurants where you can sit in groups with friends every place is different. What is a contradiction though is once you get inside you can take your masks off. What happens pretty much everywhere though is that you have to get your temperature taken, write down your name and your number and that means that they can contact you if they need to. This is a great way to make sure that everyone is healthy. When I speak to my friends and family back home there doesn't seem to be any of these precautions in place and that kind of worries me. Across the world, one of the most hotly debated and controversial topics is the use of technology to help fight the virus. Of fighting the new coronavirus, your cooperation and contribution are appreciated. When I was out last night, I had to scan a QR code which takes you to like a mini app and it sends you a message to say that you've been in Beijing for longer than 14 days. Anybody who's traveling to Beijing right now has to do a mandatory 14 day quarantine. So this proves that I have finished quarantine and I'm free to go out and about. And this doesn't just happen in restaurants and bars. This happens like pretty much everywhere. I have to do it every time I go to the hospital for a physio appointment. I have to do it when I go to work, which is a few times a week, just to prove that I've been in Beijing and I've done this. And this is both scary, but also reassuring. For better or for worse, this virus is bound to change life forever. As you can see from this video, there are signs that things are starting to return back to normal. But for those who have lost loved ones, life's never going to be the same again. But even if things have to change, there are some positives. Spending all this time inside has made people reconnect with themselves and their loved ones and spend time doing things that they've never had the time to do before. On social media, I'm seeing loads of positive stories about people appreciating the little things in life. I've seen loads of examples of businesses becoming really creative at this time. Social distancing is forcing companies to adapt, and I could see this only speeding up the process that was already there, where modern technology, home delivery, and working from home become the new norm. The way we greet each other will never be the same again. 
hugging, handshaking, and kissing will never be as popular again. I for one am pretty happy about this because there'll never be that awkward moment where you're not sure whether to give someone a hug or a handshake. Living in China puts me a little bit ahead of what's happening in the rest of the world right now because we've been going through this since January. I wanted to make this video so you can compare it to the original video I made when this first happened and see for yourselves the difference between a few months. I wanted to give you a little bit of hope that there will be life after lockdown. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up, leave me a comment and let me know where you are in the world and what's happening there right now. If you don't already subscribe to my channel, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell notification to stay up to date with all of my content. I'll see you next time.